My name is Vicki Russell. In real life, I'm the publisher of the Columbia Daily Tribune, and in my parallel volunteer universe, I am the chair of the board of directors of Regional Economic Development, Inc., or Ready, as we call it, which kind of helped put all of this together today. Um, supported by a progressive business culture and fueled by a highly educated population of just more than 100,000 people, Columbia is a powerful epicenter to a rapidly emerging entrepreneurial ecosystem. Say that real fast three times. One designed to inspire, nurture, and develop entrepreneurs that will flourish and succeed in the new economy. We applaud your inner entrepreneurship and are thrilled you have joined us today to kindle your entrepreneurial fire. Reddy has been talking about economic gardening for the past three years, and we are strategically working to enhance our entrepreneurial community. We couldn't do it without the support of our very important Reddy Council of 10, which is made up of Boone County Government, Boone County National Bank, Boone Electric Cooperative, Boone Hospital Center, the City of Columbia, Commerce Bank, and the University of Missouri. Building an entrepreneurial community is one of Reddy's top priorities. And we are here to help you. We have many programs to help your entrepreneurial aspiration. So let's get inspired to be creative. We want you to check out the Como Boom website for updates on how to compete in Como Boom Bounce Competition, which will be April the 12th at the Trulass College of Business. And there will be prize money for the top three winners. As we get started this morning, I especially want to thank the sponsors who helped make this event possible. First, I want to thank our, our title sponsor, the University of Missouri, including the Entrepreneurship Alliance, Mizzou Advantage, Office of Economic Development, Office of Research, the Robert J. Trulask Senior College of Business. We thank our presenting sponsors, Caledon Virtual, Columbia College, and William Woods University. Our speaker sponsors are Brant Bukowski, Veterans United Home Loans, Adventures, CenturyLink, and People's Bank. And last, but a very important sponsors, our break sponsors today are the Callaway Bank and Williams Keepers LLC. Let's give them all a nice round of applause. <laughs> we certainly appreciate each of those sponsors in their support of this amazing entrepreneurial event. Now, here to welcome you from the University of Missouri System is Dr. Mike Nichols, Vice President for Research and Economic Development. Oh, morning, everybody. Thank you, Vicki. On behalf of the University of Missouri System, including the, the campus here, our flagship campus at Columbia, and the President of the Board of Curators, I'd like to welcome you all to this fabulous event. Um, one of the interesting things is in my prior life I actually started a number of high-tech companies and then retired and then became a campus administrator. In fact you can tell who the administrators are in the audience by who has the tie on. That's where you have to wear those, right? So they can mark us, right, wherever we go. But back then in the 70s um, there wasn't anything like this. And in fact if you would put together the people who were doing some kind of a technology startup business, we could all sit at the booth at the diner, right, for the whole city. <laughs> it was amazing. And so today, I, I just see this audience and I'm just, you know, amazed and, and all of these events that we've been having. Uh, you know, it really does take uh, things like innovation, obviously, to get things moving along. It takes some kind of infrastructure, and this is one of the things that Ready and uh, places like Museo that provide incubation space and things like that. But it also takes investment. So w when I got into this position, that's one of the things that I, you know, remembered from my time of starting up where I had to either use a credit card or I had to hawk my car or do something to find some money to pay the bills. But now we have investments available. And those investments come in, in the form of uh, 
monies that have come out of royalties and intellectual property that has made money for the university that we then invest back into so both now students we're doing uh, as well as the faculty themselves. So there, we have a number of programs that do that. One's called Fast Track, it's a very, very, very popular program a couple of years ago. We're doing Fast Track 2 this year. It gives $50,000 to people. They apply for grants and stuff to us uh, from the University of Intellectual Property. We're starting the Student Intellectual Property Fund so that it actually will, with $500,000, and it's matched by money in the community. So we're putting together an accelerator to do that and with some of the local entrepreneurs, serial entrepreneurs here as well as Ready is going to be involved in that. So you have all of these groups now, like a perfect storm almost, that have come together, right, to do these things. And uh, with I, I think you're going to see, you know, this momentum just carried further and further, just faster and faster all the time around here. And, you know, you, know, you don't want to um, miss the opportunity. So you're here today to really gather in a lot of information from people who have really been there before and done it. And I pray that you will g to take that information and, and make it happen, especially in Bloom County or Columbia. That would be good for us. If you want to know more about all the programs and financing and things that we're doing, you can go to our website. It's investing, I-N-G, investinginmissouri.com, all one word. And you'll see all the programs and all the things that we've been doing at the university system. And uh, again, I'd like to thank you for participating in this and helping us grow this entrepreneurial community here here in, Min in Min Missouri. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. <clears throat> okay, this is not what you usually hear, but for today's event, we want to invite you to turn on your electronic devices. We encourage you to log in and view the Google Plus Hangout and the live video stream feed on YouTube. You can also tweet questions on the Twitter feed, hashtag boom. Um, we just ask you to remember to keep them on mute. We are extremely excited to have Sarah Hill as our event host today, interviewing a lineup of extraordinary entrepreneurs in person and via a Google Plus Hangout. Sarah is a 12-time Emmy Award-winning reporter who is now using her skills to share stories about our nation's veterans. Sarah is a digital storyteller and Google Plus strategist for Veterans United. She was the world's first journalist to use a Google Plus Hangout on TV, and she continues to be fascinated by the power of human media, living, breathing social media. May I present to you Sarah Hill speaking to the birth of human media and presented by Veterans United Home Loans. Thank you, Sarah. that warm welcome and it's so great to be here today and so great to see so many people who are already using human media um, and excited to share about the possibilities of that in the future. Um, Adrian, if you have the PowerPoint up, I'm not able to see. Yes, I guess you have it right over there. And let me make sure that we work here um, to the right, to the left. Here we go. You got it there? Is that a yes? Yep, that's the first slide with the hand up. You got it with the hand up. Okay. Sounds good. So how many of you all have ever been in a group video chat room? Uvu, On Air, Numble, Tiny Chat, Google Plus Hangout, Skype, Chat Roulette. All the hands in the back row went up in the room. No, I'm kidding. Um, well, you, if you have, you have experienced um, essentially what we are calling is the birth of human media. And it's pretty exciting because we here in Columbia, Missouri um, are at the forefront of it. And we get it. And we see the value in it. And we're excited to share our knowledge um, a little bit about the new human media movement. Social media is evolving, right? We started um, from the, the uh, uh, text-based bulletin boards. How many of you all remember Friendster? Uh, Facebook, Twitter, text-based engagement. Then we went to still pics and sharing video. Now we have a new layer of social media and that new layer of social media is the ability to talk to people face-to-face -face via group video chat. 
um, and I'm excited about that possibility. Uh, if you look at your screen, uh, you will see um, what essentially a Hangout looks like. And let's see, my slides there. Guess uh, there are a variety of group video chats. There's Uvu, QB, TinyChat, Zarkit is in beta, Spreecast um, lives outside of Facebook, Mumble, as I mentioned, and also Google Plus Hangouts. Uh, what makes Google Plus Hangouts unique is the fact uh, that it is a, a free television station in the middle of a crowdsourcing tool. And the earlier that businesses realize that, the earlier that they have the ability to realize that they can broadcast essentially a around the world. Text-based media versus human media with face-to-face -face interactions. So what is a Google Plus Hangout? A Hangout is essentially um, a 10-person video chat room. It's nine people plus the host. And you have the ability for it to switch between screens um, for the person who is talking. Um, there you see that right before in our studio uh, with a, a, the green screen, you don't need any fancy equipment like that. All you need is the ability to have a webcam and an internet connection, and it is essentially a, a production suite in the middle of that. What makes human media unique and Hangouts on Air unique? Um, there are two kind of Hangouts, a private Hangout, which is a 10-person video chat room, and then also a public Hangout, which is called Hangouts on Air. Google Plus is the left hand, and YouTube is the right hand. It is attached to one of the world's most powerful broadcasting platforms, which is YouTube. And that's why businesses need to pay attention to this. It's also attached to a powerful search engine, Google, uh, which is a crowdsourcing tool. So we've always had the technology to talk with each other, right? Via Skype and via video chat. But we haven't always had the ability to find each other or to find our customers or future customers. And that's why the human media movement um, is essentially taking off, because your ability to find customers and future customers. Um, a free television station, let's talk a little bit about that. Um, before, individuals might have needed um, a big metal broadcast stick in order to broadcast around the world. Uh, right now, all businesses or startups or small businesses would need um, is an internet connection. Because it is a free satellite truck, if you will, in the middle of a crowdsourcing tool, you are able to open up a Hangout on Air. It used to be on YouTube that you used to have special permission. You needed special permission, um, a special partner status in order to go live. All of that's been done away with. Uh, via Hangouts. If you have a Google Plus account, you have the ability to go live on YouTube. Um, and that is what a lot of people are seeing today. Let's talk about the first telephone book. It is um, a unique feature, not only the invention of the telephone, but the first telephone book back in February 21st of 1876 in New Haven, Connecticut. And what was so unique about that wasn't the technology of the telephone, it was the fact that we had the ability to find the each other. And that's what we're seeing with the human media movement and group video chat is that because it's embedded in a social network, that it is a crowdsourcing tool, and finally, at long last, we have the ability to find each other. Um, this is a photo of my daughter. Adrienne, if you can go forward. Um, you might be asking yourself, why do you, as an entrepreneur, um, need the ability to tap into human media? Well, this is your future demographic, okay? 15-year-olds um, who are falling asleep with their cell phone, right? And what are they doing on that cell phone? They're video chatting. They are highly accustomed to interacting, not just text-based, but via video. Ask your teenager what a selfie is, and they'll tell you, well, it's a self-portrait, of course. You know, they know how to angle even the phone to get the, the face um, in the screen. So in the future, in our, as our future customers, they will be interacting via customer service face-to-face um, -face and not just via the phone. I think that's really important for businesses and startups to understand that um, how our, our um, future demographic will be interacting. Have a picture of a bur oak, Adrian. If you can go go to that one um, of in Boone County, you all have seen it. You've driven by it. It has a large, big canopy. There it is, and the branches um, go out far and wide. In social media, you kind of need to think about your social media strategy as a tree, and that you are not only. Um, reaching out to people horizontally, but you're also reaching out to them vertically and growing their roots. The way that you grow those roots 
isn't just with text-based interaction. There needs to be a human layer in that. And via Hangouts on Air, via all the group video chat out there, you have the ability to grow the roots of your human media tree. Um, Hangouts on Air have a great ability to um, also for journalism as well. I have a picture here of the Montreal riots and um, during the Montreal riots there was a videographer who went through the streets of, of Canada and instead of live tweeting the event he was live hanging as we called it. He had a, a live hangout open and was allowing individuals to join that hangout and have a group conversation about what they were seeing. So think about the future of that to transform journalism as well. If you have the ability not only to engage your audience via text-based social media, but to engage them with human media. And not only that, text-based media is asynchronous. It's he said, she said, and you have to wait for it, right? But in human media, you have the ability to communicate with people in real time. So you're not watching a Twitter feed and waiting for someone to post um, you know, a still pic or a video. You are actually not only watching a video of the scene, you are in that moment and have the ability to interact with your surroundings and actually talk to people. Um, it's not uncommon in, in future events in the future. You saw right there, a gentleman has a laptop and he opened it up um, on in the middle of the NATO riots in Chicago and he was showing people live what was happening in real time. Uh, hangouts interacting with, with a gold medal not too long ago. Jamie Gray, she is a gold medal um, Olympian and a veteran and she was able to share with us in real time what that gold medal felt like, what it tasted like, do you wear it in the shower? People were able to ask all kinds of questions that they wouldn't necessarily have been able to ask had it just been a text-based um, interaction. A Harrier jet pilot, I mean there are all kinds of different ways that you can interact with your audience face to face. And a new initiative that you will also see a lot of virtual tour um, entities, charities, organizations pop up. John Butterill and Bruce Garber um, from Boston, Bruce Gaba as I call him with, it, with his accent, um, are leading an effort called Virtual Photo Walks and Veterans United is, is helping them using Google Plus Hangouts, veterans who aren't able to physically travel to their memorial are still able to see it in Washington DC via people there who have streaming rigs and can show them live. Uh, we had an instance where one of our veterans um, was in a hangout and he was a D-Day veteran. And one of the things that he wanted to see was the beaches of Normandy, right, France. He was there and he wanted to go back there. He was able, via a Google Plus Hangout, to um, experience the beaches of Normandy, France, and even hear the waves, again live, asked to go closer to the beach uh, via that human media interaction. And that would have never happened had it been uh, via a text-based post. So what are some of the tools that you need to hang out? You need a webcam, right? These are free digital tools. And you need an internet connection. You can also hang out from your smartphone. You can join a hangout on air from your, your Android device. And you can join any private hangout at all from an iPhone um, or your Android device. And um, other optional tools, some people use headsets. It's not necessarily uh, important that you do, but people are using headsets as well. Another key feature, um, lower third app. This is essentially a business card that people are using when they go from hangout to hangout. Uh, there is a gentleman in Germany named Moritz Toxeldorf. And um, he joins hangouts and he's a, a, a developer and he is able to write code for what the user needs. So inside this group space, you are seeing a very unique synergy because you have developers in the same space with users who are using that technology and in real time they are collaborating as opposed to going back and forth. And they are not only collaborating, but they are able to find each other. So Morks developed something called a lower third app and you had the ability um, to put your title on there, to put your, your website it's a lower third graphic and you can go from hangout to hangout in order to share your message or enable to share your, your website. So in closing, um, if we can bring up that shot, Adrian, uh, last shot of the bur oak tree talking about human media, um, how would you rather communicate with your following or your future following? Would you rather text them or would you rather talk to them? Human media provides you the ability to talk to them. It's a magic carpet that takes you around the block or around the world 
in a matter of seconds. A lot of communities are talking about how to increase access to their physical space via airports or anything else. What this does is increase your, your, your access via a virtual space. And I'm really excited to see um, how more entrepreneurs in this area, more startups, use this new layer of social media called human media. Are there any questions out there? Yes. Um, are they using anything like this for, like, um, say, kids that can't go to school because they're sick for an extended amount of time, where they can still be in the classroom and interact with the teacher? Mm -hmm. You know, that is a future use case. There's a whole, I mean, you guys can come up with a wealth of future use cases. Um, they are using an education. I know someone who's using it um, to teach individuals hangout or uh, Spanish as a, um, a, a language. Um, there are universities who are experiencing with, with this space. Um, online courses that are not only doing it asynchronous uh, communication via online, but offering the option to hang out and have real-time communication. So the potential for education with this space is huge. Uh, matter of fact, there's a Google program called VetNet HQ right now that is specifically using this space to teach veterans job skills. So in the future, you'll see a lot more collaborative efforts, um, not simply because of the technology, but because that technology is embedded um, in a space where people have the ability to find each other. It's embedded in a phone book of a social network. <laughs>